We are in the middle of a solar storm that's been giving us aurora all over the world for the past day or so, and it's going to last the next 24 hours, and then we got another one right on its heels. Those stories are more in the news this week. Even though the sun has had virtually no sunspots over the past two weeks, that doesn't mean there's been a lull in activity. We are being hit right now by a solar storm from this massive coronal hole that has rotated into the Earth's strike zone. It's sending us fast wind right now and has been over the past 24 hours. We've had gorgeous aurora shows all the way down to the Netherlands and even up to Victoria, Australia. And just on its heels, we have another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth's strike zone probably in about 10 days. So we're going to have about two weeks of some good solar storming. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the levels are still extremely low. We've been pretty spotless for quite a while now, so you expect these levels to be low. They're really below the seafloor, which means there aren't any issues for your amateur radio operators or you uh, GPS operators. We are getting a few new spots on the sun right now that are rotating onto the east limb. Those will probably give us a few B-class flares, but really, it's nothing to worry about, and the trend is going to continue. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually had some decent activity was about two weeks ago. Since then, things continue to get quieter and quieter and quieter until finally you can see a little activity and then BAM! There's the solar storm that's hitting us now. It started off strong and it's kind of diminished a little bit, but it's still been enough to give us some decent aurora. Like I said, clear down to the Netherlands and even up to Australia, which is pretty good for considering that this is just a minor storm. But this kind of storming will continue easily on and off for the next day or so, maybe even two days. So you amateur radio operators, you're going to have to deal with this uh, evenly over the next day, but things should calm down maybe through the weekend, and then it'll pick up again once that new solar storm hits us from that other coronal hole. And this solar storm has brought us aurora views that are very vivid all around the world, including some brief shows that reach deep into mid-latitudes, which is pretty unusual for a storm that's this mild. We've had views in Denmark, and in Finland, in Russia, and in Scotland, it's been all over Scotland, and in Ireland, as well as England, and Cumbria in the UK, it's even reached as far south as the Netherlands for a brief while. Now we go across the pond and we hit New Brunswick and Saskatchewan. It's hit Alberta and it's dipped down into Michigan in the United States as well as Wisconsin. And we've even had Aurora Australis that reached as far north as Victoria, Australia. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in the middle of that solar storm that's due to that fast wind that's hitting Earth right now. NOAA is expecting uh, minor storm conditions with about a 60% chance of a major storm at high latitudes over the next day or so. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about active conditions with about a 25% chance of minor storm conditions. Now, this should continue kind of on and off over the next couple days, and if we have that stealthy storm storm that was launched kind of in the middle of the fast wind that we're in right now, if that actually in intensifies the storm, these conditions could linger on in through Friday and possibly into Saturday before things begin to calm down. But we'll just kind of have to wait and see just whether or not that particular storm, that wispy storm, is actually going to make things worse or just fizzle away. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, I know I sound like a broken record, but everything is still in the green when it comes to flares, and it will be like that for probably the foreseeable future. We do have a couple regions that are rotating into Earth view off of the east limb, but they should only bring us about B-class level flares, and that's really nothing to worry about for either you amateur radio operators or you GPS operators. The one good thing that these regions bring into view is more solar flux, because we're kind of lingering at the marginal edge of even having radio propagation. So this is good news for your ham radio operators. We are still getting enough flux for propagation, but things over this week will probably be still a bit dicey.
So despite having near spotless sun for over two weeks, we are still getting solar activity. We are in the middle of a solar storm right now that's been giving us gorgeous aurora all over the world, and there's more to come. This storm should last for the next day or two, maybe into the early part of the weekend, and then we'll have some quiet, and then yet another solar storm's gonna hit us when more fast wind hits us from yet another coronal hole. So you aurora photographers, keep your shutter fingers ready, because you're gonna be very busy over the next 10 days to two weeks. As far as you amateur radio operators are concerned, you're kind of going to have to tough it out for, you know, maybe two weeks. But you've got this little hole that's going to happen probably late Saturday in through Sunday where things should be... So you might actually be able to get on the bands for a little while and do some contesting or something. But outside of that, you're going to have to just hang on and wait for the quiet. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to honor a fallen hero of mine. Matt Parker the president of the American Meteorological Society, has died. He passed just this last week. He was a dear colleague and friend of mine, and he was a champion of space weather. Matt, I'll miss our long talks and our brainstorming sessions on how to bring space weather and space weather broadcasting into the AMS. But I promise you, I will continue to press on towards this collective vision for the benefit of both the space weather community and the public. I miss you.